Yeah, so on that, I mean, there have been a, num a number of positive breakthroughs, let's be clear on that, regarding China. Mm. The, the PM strip, the trade mm. tariffs, the release of Chung Lei, that's just to name a few, but mm. is this playing too much into China's hands and, and perhaps giving them too much leverage? Well, it's a... What is it that we've got to do? I mean, either we don't have any form of meaningful engagement or we do, but if we do have meaningful engagement, somehow that's bad too. I mean, I think the government deserves a bit of a pass, a tick or a pass mark in terms of working with China. We're not uh, trading off any security issues. That's We're very firm on all of that. But I think that where we can, we should try and get the best out of our relationship with China so long as it doesn't compromise our national interests. So I, yeah. I think we're actually doing pretty well in that area, considering. Yeah, OK. So the, so the context of that last question w was related to Liv's um, story that she's running today, this piece mm. that was picked up by The Australian that points to China potentially being able to hack into our systems through solar panels. I mean, are you, do you have any concerns that our network is vulnerable? Well, um, I, I sort of think the National Party's a bit cute, aren't they? Now, this is their latest reason to not do anything in renewable energy because it's a Chinese spy. Um, listen, I think technology generally is vulnerable to uh, bad actors globally. Our phones, you've got to assume your microphone's always on on your phone. I think one of the challenges, uh, it's not just a, a solar panel renewable energy issue, uh, the challenge is that our technology can be used to spy on us, but that's not just about China. Uh, we live in a world where there's increasing cyber hacks, where if people are indiscriminate with the information they put up online, it can be harvested and used against you. So I think there's a general challenge. Uh, you know, we, we, have our, we have our phones, they're great, we have them all very close to us, but a lot of this technology is not dumb and you've always got to be switched on about making sure you've got good safety hygiene in terms of your technology. So... You, I don't think it's just a solar panel issue. I think it's a technology safety hygiene issue generally, and it's not just about China. It's um, There are people out there who seek to use our devices to get into our homes in a way which, before all this amazing technology existed, wasn't possible. Mm. I, and just a final one I want to ask on Israel, Bill. Um, the Prime Minister, he was again asked about this this morning, and, he's, and, he, was, and he was strong in his support of Israel... But do you think he should be in Israel on this current trip to actually show solidarity with the Jewish people? Uh, I know he has solidarity with uh, the Jewish people and with Australians of Jewish heritage, just as I know he feels keenly for Australians of Palestinian heritage. The Prime Minister has been very clear about his repugnance at the shocking atrocities of the psychotic yeah. uh, Ham Hamas attacks. Um, France and England and the USA, they're on the... They're permanent members of the UN Security Council. You know, I love Australian foreign policy. It's important, but I, I honestly don't know if it is necessary for him to be in Tel Aviv right now. I, I just... I know the, the, outra the, the, the Liberal outrage machine is saying he must be there, but I'm genuinely not sure what it would add for an right. Australian Prime Minister to be in Israel right now. I mean, it what, what, what's he going to say there that he can't say here? And, yeah. um, again, we're not permanent members of the UN Security Council like those other right. countries. Is it because, though, I mean, some have suggested that not, that not everyone in the Labor Party is singing from the same song sheet with uh, some senior members um, essentially accusing Israel of war crimes last week? No, that's not why he's not there. And I, I don't think uh, that is what um, Labor, senior Labor Party people have been saying. I think uh, they've been expressing their support for... All of the victims caught up in this dreadful conflict. But Labor and the Prime Minister, and myself included, have been very clear that whatever the plight of the two-state negotiations in the Middle East between Palestine and Israel have been up to now, nothing legitimises the atrocities that Hamas did. You know, there's, it's, we, I completely repudiate the view that somehow uh, Israel deserved what happened to it. It didn't. Those people didn't deserve that. I also know that we want to make sure that however Israel deals with Hamas and its right to defend itself, that we want to see international laws be observed as much as they can. And that's important okay. for innocent Palestinians caught up in this situation beyond their control. Bill Shorten, as always, thanks for your time. We'll talk to you soon.